Right, it's review time and it's a different product this time and something quite exciting, something quite uh, unique if you like um, and kind of appeals to my kind of experimental side as a, as a home brewer. Um, I stumbled upon this product just purely by seeing it on a, uh, I think it might have been on a Facebook group or on a forum somewhere and someone had mentioned that they, they bought the kit themselves and it's a company called Hop Shots and um, I've got a little box here and the chap that runs the company, Jason, has sent me a, a few little samples to try out. Um, I'll put the link to the actual website down below because you can get various kits and you know different setups about what you can get in each one. And I'm going to uh, do it in three different parts because I've got three different hop shots to try. So I'll film three different little videos and sort of compile it all together and you know give my thoughts. But in this, this little kit, the, the most important thing you get is your little hop shot infuser which has got a kind of really cool little hop embossed bit of kind of like bit of bit of wood on there kind of thing that was gonna dangle over the side of your glass. You get a hop shot beer mat. I mean I, I, this is what's in my little kit that I got sent. And I love it comes in the kind of proper kind of package box and it's got present and Father's Day and birthday written all over it I think. Business card. And then we've got these little hot packets. And basically we've got some is it Waiiti? Why I type? I can never pronounce it, but some of them. We have Simcoe. And we've also got one here, Earl Grey. And uh, this is a blend, because it's Summit and Earl Grey. It's a tea and hot blend, which I'm really excited to try, because I'm currently doing a um, an Earl Grey IPA, or trying to do like a clone version of one. And um, I'm kind of experimenting with how tea affects beer and that. So basically what Hop Shots is, is infusing your beer with the hops when it's actually in the glass. Um, as a home brewer myself, I've often done dry hopping the beer before it gets bottled or kegged. But I have to admit I've never ever thought of actually dry hopping a beer while it's in the glass. Um, so the first one I'm going to try is my own home brew. Um, so I'm going to go for the, uh, the Waiti. And uh, I'm going to put that into uh, my Mochuaca beer, which was a pale ale, but um, as it's been in the bottle a little while, it has kind of lost some of that kind of hoppiness edge to it. So I'm going to see what that brings to the table. What I'm going to do is decant it into two glasses, just to sort of give you know a, a test sample to see what it's like without and what it's like with. Um, you do get a really cool little guidebook telling you all about the process which I think is really fantastic and it also goes all through the different hops and uh, what they're going to bring to the table in terms of uh, adding to your glass once you've added it. And there's also a really cool little section about the, the owners of the company and they've, uh, they've even handwritten it in here which I think is excellent. Um, favourite hop of the season and tip of the moment. I think that's fantastic. It's got that personal touch that that's been that's been wrote in there, and also a little bit about the the tea blends. So I'll cover more of that at the end. But I'm going to uh, get the first beer, uh, decant into the bottles, and then uh, we'll cut back. I'm going to let it infuse for about ten minutes while the beer is quite cold. Um, there are recommended guidelines of how to infuse the beer, but they do say to experiment of your own. You know how long you leave it how warm or cold the beer is to see you know, the different effects that you get. So I'll cut back when I've got the glasses ready and then we'll, uh, we'll go for a taste test. So we've got our beer decanted into two glasses and we're going to crack open the little hot packet and plop it in the infuser and then crack that in the beer. Just in case of opening it up.
you know, made a pig's ear of opening the packet up, but we're gonna gonna crack that in there. It's all in. It smells really, really nice, really hoppy. Right, that's all closed up. They're all in the uh, the little infuser, and it's got a little hook just on the side there. It's going to let you hang that on the side of the glass. So I'm just going to plop that in there. It's probably going to take a, a couple of minutes for the, the hops to actually get a little bit wet and absorb all the beer and it will sink down a lot more. I'm going to let that infuse for about 10 minutes and we'll cut back. Right, so we're back. The beer's been infusing for about 12 minutes now and um, I've also agitated it from time to time. It recommends in the guide that you kind of dunk it like a, almost like as if you're making a nice cup of tea and give it a good old dunk. And I have to admit, I haven't tried it yet, but on first kind of nosing, there's a definite massive improvement over aroma in the glass compared to this one. This one's still got, I mean, like I said, the hoppiness in this beer is kind of quite faded out. It was a, a pale with uh, Mochuaca hops, but it's, um, it's faded somewhat. And there's a little bit on the nose, but not an awful lot. Whereas when you come into this one, it's it's really kind of punchy. You can smell you can smell there's hops in there. I mean, obviously there is a, a whole load of hops floating around in the ball in there, but it definitely smells like it's made an impact on the on the actual beer. Right. So we're gonna gonna go for that one first. Still a good beer. Still a reasonable amount of hoppiness in there, but as much as there would be for any pound. I'm gonna go for a bit of this now. I'm gonna gonna keep it in there just to kind of see if it develops over. It's pretty good. It's definitely awakened the beer as well kind of uh, it feels kind of uh, like more kind of rounded it's give it kind of more of a, a hockey profile hmm I'm definitely getting a little bit of lemonness to that that wasn't clearly not there before because it's not in that one It's pretty good actually, I have to admit it's when you compare that one to that one, this one almost seems quite quite dull in comparison to the taste. Yeah, pretty much like there's there's something there but Hmm, I'm really impressed with that. I think it's the difference between kind of like when you open a fresh hoppy beer and you get that initial kind of hoppiness on the nose and the real kind of fresh hoppiness on the taste and then as opposed to a, a home brew or a beer you've had for a long time and it's kind of lost all that hoppiness and it's really kind of subdued and it's kind of still an easy drinker but it's it's lost all its character this is like invigorated it's like it's been massaged and brought back to life it's really kind of brought a lot to the table I'm, I'm very impressed I'm definitely getting lots of more lemon than anything I would say but it's it's worked really well in this beer one of my next tests is probably going to be putting it into kind of a not too much of a cheap lager because obviously I would say you're probably not going to be able to improve on something that wasn't already kind of that great to start with you know you're not going to be able to get a kind of a value you know beer or bitter and kind of you know make it that much better I think it you know you need to start with something that's oh reasonably okay to start with but who knows maybe you could improve a kind of a real weak beer from the supermarket but I've got a couple of beers lined up that I intend to to try with it I'm gonna um, probably go with what have we got next the Simcoe I'm 
probably going to put that in maybe a steam beer or another pale ale and uh, same with the Earl Grey I might kind of uh, might put that into maybe a, an Adnams ghost ship or something like that to see what it what it does but I'll, uh, I'll do that in a separate video and then cut them all together but I have to say on, on first first impressions I'm delighted and also kind of angered at myself that I never thought to try this because it's I think it's worked wonders it's going to be interesting to see how the flavour develops you know once left for a bit longer I think on the next test I might film at several increments see if it's going to you know get a little bit more hoppy as it gets down to the bottom once it's kind of concentrated into that small amount of beer so the first test has been a great success cheers hop shots right it's beer review again but it's part of hop shots I've already done the, uh, the first part of it off camera just to the speed things up so we've got a control here which is just the little measure of uh, I decided to go with pills and Urkel in the end after having a bottle of that the other night really enjoyed it um, purely because um, I had a Adams Ghost Ship I was going to try it in but that was already quite hoppy and I weren't sure if you'd really get the full effect of it and didn't want it to conflict with the Simcoe so I thought I'd choose a beer that was more neutral to go with that so this has been steeping for about 10 minutes now and uh, I've put it back in the fridge just to let it sit and obviously gave it a good dunking this one has kind of kicked up a little bit more uh, little tiny hot bits have come out but what I did notice the other night um, when I finished the beer off camera is as you get further and further down the glass the, the kind of the taste really intensifies obviously because it's getting a lot stronger which should only mean I guess if you leave it even longer possibly up to 20 minutes you're really going to get it quite pungent but as it hits the bottom it's a real kind of hoppy kind of like um, fruitiness right at the bottom of the last bit I did and uh, I don't think you're going to get a whole heap of bitterness from having the hops just in there for that, that limited amount of time but you certainly get like a little bit of a, a bitterness on the back note not a heavy amount but compared to how like pills and herbal tastes without kind of extra kind of fruity hops that it's got because it only has sars hops in it when it's brewed it's kind of it's got a small amount of bitterness but it's quite subdued in terms of fruitiness this really adds you know an extra dimension to the beer I'd say it's really changed a bit to be fair, it's kind of, if you put that in the glass with that and there were two same glasses and you gave them to someone and said try that, you would not know that they were both pills and herbal, the, the dry hopping on a bit has really kind of brought out a kind of a fruitiness to it. Which I think maybe just enhances the bitterness that's already within the beer rather than adding extra bitterness but certainly more on the lines of a, of a pale ale now rather than a, than a pilsner just providing the, uh, the Simcoe in there it's really really made it nice mm. it's amazing it works so well it really does the final part of the um, Hop Shots review and this time it was the Earl Grey and Summit which is a tea and hop blend um, but this one you don't need the actual cage you get an actual kind of tea bag if you can see it there it's got some Earl Grey and it's in its own little bag um, all the hop shots in the cages I did for about 10 minutes and um, and then put it back in the fridge which was quite uh, quite good um, leaving it a bit longer did kind of bring out a lot more sort of depth of flavours and make it quite a bit stronger especially towards the end of the glass it gets quite hoppy and resinous and the, the last bit of the, uh, the beer uh, so with this one I thought I'd leave it a little bit longer so it's been about 10 minutes in the fridge took it out still quite chilled and left it another 10 minutes so this particular beer went for a revisionist steam beer let's pick this up in Tesco I've got the, the control there which is just the both the same colour. I think it's made it a little bit darker maybe. Certainly a little bit murky. You do get a tiny little amount of kind of sort of like hop residue come out. It's creaked up the top where the hops have expanded but it's it's not noticeable. 
So, first one. Pretty kind of standard. That particular beer, there isn't an awful lot going on, which is why I chose it to kind of, I wanted to see the, the flavours that were going to come out of the, uh, the Earl Grey. It's okay, it's an okay beer. This one instantly, obviously, you can smell the hops because there's a big old tea bag just sitting there. You can, you real get a good old punch of hops in your face. Mm, it's smelling very orangey. Fruity, and it smells really fresh, obviously, because there is a, a whole load of fresh hops sitting on top. I'm gonna dive in. Again, works really well. Big hint of kind of orange notes. Getting the bergamot very so slightly. Uh, for people that don't like Earl Grey tea, probably not the sort of tea bag you're gonna go for to put in your beer, but um, I happen to really love Earl Grey tea. And uh, also plan to do my own Earl Grey IPA. Um, I'm not sure, maybe maybe a few, I, for me personally, I'd probably stick a whole load more Earl Grey in there, but I think they've, played it safe to avoid kind of you know overpowering hops and you, you've got a mix of both rather than kind of too much of one or the other but again I think that you know if these were in identical glasses took the tea bag out you know apart from that one being a little bit clearer now someone had that one and someone had that one they'd probably turn around and say this was more of a an IPA style or kind of you know a pale ale with a few good American hops in it whereas that one's just kind of pretty much your standard kind of lager or steam beer but it definitely definitely spruces it up it's really good mm. And even more convenient that it's in the tea bag. I was I was getting ready to use the little cage, which works exceptionally well. It does really do the job. I am really really impressed. There are a couple of things I'm probably going to address before I finish out on the video. I know there'd be some home brewers out there that would probably say, you know, we've got hops at home, we could do this, and you know, for the cost of it, you could get your own tea infuser. But I don't really think that's what it's about. This is more of a a gift for someone it appeals to the experiment side of it and you know bearing in mind we have you know a big packet of hops for someone who doesn't homebrew themselves they're not exactly going to buy a big bag of hops and mess around with this you know to get a nice little gift pack get them individually weighed out you know the little the personal touches that are on the the actual cage itself and if you look at the kits online they are they're really well thought out from a from the gift side and also for people that you know want to experiment I think if you receive that as a gift it's you know it's fantastic so I can't you know I can't fault it for that and I've been I've got to admit I think the results have, have surprised me how well it really does work I was kind of a little bit skeptical about well one I'd never tried it myself and if it would really impart much flavours into the beer just from sitting in there for a few minutes but it does add a whole new dimension to beers and I'd, I'd certainly be happy if I got that as a present. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it's really original. So be sure to check it out. I'm going to put all the links below to the Hop Shots website and where you can get your own kit. If you're looking for a present for Father's Day, Christmas ain't that far away now. So cheers to Hop Shots for sending me to the test. <laughs>